I've been uh, a chef since the age of 16, um, and um, I've, uh, I've been very, very lucky in my career. Started off uh, at school in Paris, um, went to college in Scarborough with James Martin, uh, then from then uh, did my apprenticeship, um, got, became a little bit disillusioned at the time and ended up um, in the forces because of what, having to work 70 plus hours a week in catering was quite difficult. Ended up in the forces, was told that be, if you were very, very hard working and tried really hard in the forces, you could end up working for the Prime Minister, but that was quite rare. After about six months, I found myself driving down the drive to Chequers with gravel popping everywhere in my Ford Fiesta. Um, and never looked back since. Um, came out of the forces and went to work in, uh, in London, Brown's Hotel in Mayfair, Landmark in London, which got five red stars. Um, Hole in the Wall in Bath, which was my first head chess position. Uh, had the Michelin Red M at the time. Opened Hazel Castle with my brother in 1997, converted that from a monastery into a hotel. Um, and from then went to do um, product development with multiple supermarkets, including Marks and Spencers, into teaching from there. Bradford College, Baptism of Fire, um, and from then came to teaching a, a, a focus on food with a cooking school at Dean Clough. Designed, I mentioned, Educational Trust to own the cooking school, um, behind the focus on food campaign, and anything that's surplus from here goes back uh, to the charity. So that's an, another reward, really, personally, to know that things are going back there. And it's, um, it, it makes you a bit more hungry to get the business and make things work here, knowing that with the impact that we have on the community here. The charity is called Design Dimension Educational Trust. Uh, this is behind the focus on food campaign. The charity has been running for about 24 years. Uh, the focus on food campaign starts about 1996 when the charity lobbied with the government to get cooking back into schools again. Um, we've got five cooking buses, which aren't buses as we would visualise them. They're articulated lorries that open out on both sides to full-size teaching and training classrooms. Uh, they can accommodate 16 uh, students. Um, when they're out in the community, they can also work with adults in the community as well. We've done various different courses with, uh, with disabled uh, children um, and one of the most rewarding, uh, again for me, is um, the partially sighted children that we've had here. I thought I'm going to make it a bit more challenging, um, I've got to look at real life situations. Um, so I took my glasses off, closed my eyes and I would roll out a piece of pa a pastry myself, two directions, feel it, what was it like, could I cut it into four? for example, could I make it into four tarts? And from that, I learned a lot myself as to what I could develop to help the Parsi sighted children. Um, when it came to running the course live um, and them doing it, things worked. They were satisfied. Um, I went home with a really good feeling inside my heart, knowing that we're, we're, we're done from that. And that was just the beginning of that, that story. I'd say so without a doubt. We've had a, a major food retailer come here, for example, and we trained um, their head office staff and got them more innovative with food. The, the teaching side of things where I bump into students that have been here um, and also from our leisure courses that we run here as well. And when you see customers from there, um, and it's so rewarding to bump into these people. The most difficult thing for me is to you see somebody without an apron on as they see me without my chef jacket on and it's putting that name to that face and that situation there. The next three years look even more exciting. Uh, the first area I want to talk about is the further education side of things, uh, where we're working with businesses in the area to uh, train chefs in the correct way that they, would, they would need them training for, for their businesses. We're very lucky here to have a great team at the cooking school and we're able to deliver levels one, two and three um, in City and Guilds qualifications. Uh, the first qualification we're going to start off with is, is level one. Um, and get that running from September this year. We're going to be looking at people working in old people's homes, uh, people working in restaurants, cafes, uh, it could be hospitals, and see what their needs are. Um, the charity itself does like to work with the community, as I do myself, and um, so that's one of the goals I've got, I've got with this task. We've 
done all sorts of things, working with partnership with people. For example, Prashad, who are in Gordon Ramsay's uh, best restaurants, um, their courses have been very, very successful. Um, so partnerships like that have taken off. Artisan bread making, that's something that's very, very popular, which we're able to deliver from the cooking school. We've got our own sourdough that's uh, in the back kitchen there. It's, we look after it every single day. We're also running um, some uh, evening courses as well. We've got one uh, section of courses, which is Monday nights, three Monday nights, Great value for money. Uh, six till nine, people can come here after work if they wish to. Um, and it's opening again to the community so that people can come here from a cost point of view and fitting in with their work plans as well. We started off um, by doing training with a, a leading supermarket and training their staff. Um, but we've also found that team building is something that works really, really well in the cooking school with us having 20 workstations. And because of the way that the cooking school has been designed in the first place, it means that we can group the teams together. We've got an excellent area in the middle of the cooking school, um, which houses two teams of four there, for example. Then they can be broken down around the outside of the kitchen. Um, we have a boardroom next door so that the, the business can uh, have a meeting prior to or after, depending on which way we want to, to look at the team building exercise, come into the cooking school. In the cooking school itself, uh, whereas normally when we were teaching here on one of our leisure courses, we would break a dish down so it would be uh, preparing the chicken, sealing it off in the pan. Uh, the customers go and do the same thing with them making a reduction and going from there. Uh, classic cock of dish, for example. When we're doing a team building exercise, we will show the starter, the main course and the dessert all in one go, breaking it down, explaining in detail about everything. Uh, recommending the processes uh, taken and the order to do things in. It's up to the teams from then on to make records, uh, decide between themselves how they're going to deliver that for set times. Teams then go and get, get on with their work from then on. Feel free to contact myself. Um, I'm always welcome to discussion about things. I can bespoke a course to the company. So whatever their aims or, or goals are, I can look at the um, uh, bespoken things for, the, for an evening. There can be something for, for dinner, for example. The, the team building days um, are, are built up from um, the cooking side of things. We'll then sit down and dine towards the end, end, end of that. Um, but the other variations we've got on the team building day are um, we do a, sh a chef's table. Uh, which is where our chefs in the cooking school can come and cook. Well, we'll cook in the middle of the, co of the cooking school here for the clients. Um, and so they can sit around on tall stools around the outside of the, the cooking school and, and watch the food being prepared. And we can, we can discuss it as we go along, which is a bit more of a leisurely way of doing things. The other thing that works really well with a larger group, because so far I've mentioned doing up to 25 people uh, with, with, a, with a team building exercise, for a larger group is to uh, have a bit of presentation, some demonstrations, and pull out of the hat uh, a little bit of a, um, almost like, a, like an omelette challenge, for example. That works very, very well. We've done it with before we've been presenting to people where we've done several dishes. One of them I did was a, a duck dish, a lovely duck dish with some fruit and some, and some nice herbs and, and salad leaves. I picked out eight people out of the, of the audience and um, they then donned aprons and went into the middle of the cooking school to uh, cook the duck dish then. And it was quite fun to take them by surprise, but a, a good icebreaker, I would say. Some very, very good feedback. We've got some uh, good responses on our website and some feedback from individual companies that have been here. Um, but it does, it does uh, shine a light on how teams work together and, and individuals as well. I mean, I get a lot of satisfaction from uh, spending the day with a company doing this. It's one of those really pleasurable jobs where if someone said to you, what's your ideal job, this would be it, because I get to do something that I really enjoy, working with uh, fantastic people who are very enthused about what they do. But at the same time, I'm helping support the charity, put money back into it again.